Greetings, Pookie fans! Michael here, and as I'm sure you are very well aware, only Pokemon that will be in the Galar Pokedex will be able to be transferred into Pokemon Sword and Shield from Pokemon Home. This whole controversy is known as the hashtag the bring back the national decks controversy or Dexit, which is, God, that's still such a good name. I personally was never disappointed by this news, and if you want to know why, you should watch my latest video. But a lot of people are disappointed, including my very good friend, Pokemon7, who, despite his disappointment, made a video talking about Pokemon that he hoped would not be in Sword and Shield. You should definitely watch his video and subscribe to him because he is great, but in his video, he approached it with the point of view of, well, I'm not happy about Pokemon not being in the game, but if we have to lose some, these are the ones I could live without. I thought that video was a great idea and my list differs significantly from his because he put cast form in it. So I wanted to make my own video with the same premise. Pokemon that I hope will not be in Sword and Shield so that the chances of the Pokemon that I do hope will be in Sword and Shield are increased. This list will actually include more Pokemon than the title implies since each entry on the list will be an entire evolutionary line. Also, I won't be discussing any Pokemon that have already been confirmed to be in the Galar Pokedex at the time of filming this video, and I'm going to assume that none of these Pokemon are going to get any new evolutions or new forms. So, none of the situations of, oh, I hope it's there just in case it gets a new evolution type thing. So don't forget to leave a like on the video, please. And let's dive in to 30 Pokemon that I hope will not be in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Number one is Spiro and Fearow. Of all the normal flying type birds, I feel like Spiro and Fearow are some of the least interesting. They're not the regional birds, they're just there as extra meaner birds. I don't know, I just feel like we have enough normal flying type birds and if we have to cut some, these would probably be them. Number two is Zubat, Golbat, and Crobat. Now, this may surprise some of you since as many of you know, Crobat is one of my all-time favorite Pokemon. However, I still don't want it in the game because I am sick and tired of seeing Zubats and Golbats in every freaking cave. I want the cave spawns to be more unique and more interesting and not just have Zubats in them for the upteenth time. Give me a new Gen 8 cave Pokemon to deal with. Zubats and Golbats have gotten old. If I have to lose access to Crobat for this to happen, that's fine. I wasn't gonna use Crobat on my team anyways because I've used one so many times before. Number three is Geodude, Graveler, and Golem. These are here for the exact same reason as the Zubat line. I am tired of seeing them in caves. They've been in a butt ton of different caves and a butt ton of different games. I don't really need to see them again. Also, they have Alola forms, which I've never really cared that much about. So if we can remove six different character models by only removing three Pokemon, That'll free up extra space for other Pokemon. Number four is Oddish, Gloom, Vileplume, and Belossum. I have always felt that the Oddish line was kind of dull. They're just blue blob creatures with flowers or other plants on top. Belossum is a bit different, but it's just never really stood out to me. My indifference to these Pokemon, combined with the fact that I've always thought it was so freaking annoying to have to get two different Glooms and two different evolutionary stones to complete the Pokedex, means that I'd be completely fine if we didn't have to see them in these games. Number five is Tentacool and Tentacruel. These are here for the exact same reason as Zubat and Geodude, except I'm not tired of seeing them in caves, I'm tired of seeing them in every body of water ever. Tentacool and Tentacruel are fine Pokemon, but when they've been basically all I've seen while surfing for years, I would be fine with a break. Number six is Lickitung and Licky Licky. They are bad Pokemon. I've never liked Lickitung and I have never liked Licky Licky. Their giant tongues are weird and uncomfortable and they don't need to be in the games. Number seven is Mime Jr. and Mr. Mime. Mime Jr. is cute, but Mr. Mime is horrible and creepy and disturbing and I hate it. It was admittedly amusing in Detective Pikachu, but other than that, I don't really ever need to see Mr. Mime in any game ever again. Number eight is Smoochum and Jinx. Surprise, another hideous Pokemon that I have always disliked that I really never need to see again. Number nine is Bonsly and Sudowoodo. I've grown a bit weary of Sudowoodo's gimmick. It disguising itself as a tree and having to get some sort of water source to scare it away was an interesting thing in the Johto games and was mildly amusing in Sun and Moon. But now that I've seen this several times, I'm getting a bit tired of that gimmick being used as a roadblock. I hope their roadblock excuses are more creative than some have been in the past, 
and therefore I hope they don't fall back onto Pseudo Wudo again. We've seen it enough. Number 10 is Apom and Ambipom. Apom is here simply because I have a personal grudge against it right now. In Pokemon Go during the Detective Pikachu event a couple months ago, Apoms were everywhere, like more than half of all spawns. In addition to them being everywhere, they were extremely difficult to catch. Like dark orange or worse circle on all of them. It was infuriating. Apom and Ambipom are not strong Pokemon in Pokemon Go. They're not that strong in the main series either, but it's always been so annoying to me that this basically useless Pokemon is so difficult to catch. So because of my Pokemon Go grunge against it, I hope I don't have to see it in Sword and Shield. It will be sweet, sweet vengeance. Number 11 is Unknown. Unknown has a ton of different models. I believe more models than any other Pokemon species. Well, there's thousands and thousands of different Spinda spot patterns. That's the texture of the model that's changing, not the model itself. So if Unknown isn't in the game, that would save them a lot of time on model editing. Plus, I don't really need to see another location with all the different Unknown in a different room. It's been done, we can have something else. Number 12 is Delibird. It's simply just lame and weak. I hope it's gone in favor of a cool new Gen 8 ice flying type. Number 13 is Smeargle. Battlers won't have to worry about its unlimited moveset, which I'm sure they would appreciate. Number 14 is Miltank. You know why. Number 15 is Volbeat and Illumise. Does anyone honestly care about these Pokemon? They're just weird bugs wearing travel pillows around their neck and they're just not cool. Ditch them and give us a more interesting Gen 8 bug type evolutionary line. We don't need these. Number 16 is Gulpin and Swalot. I've always felt Gulpin and Swalot were just underwhelming pure poison types. Their designs aren't particularly interesting, pure poison isn't great, and they aren't very strong. I simply wouldn't miss them. Number 17 is Spoink and Grumpig. Like Gulpin and Swalot, I've always felt these two were underwhelming and honestly quite forgettable. I've never used them because I never cared to, but also I've gotten like six or more shiny Grumpig from the Ultra Wormholes in Ultra Sun and have given several away, so also shiny hunting them in Sword and Shield would not be very interesting. Number 18 is Chingling and Chimeco. These Pokemon are completely useless. Chimeco was already useless and boring, and then they gave it a baby Pokemon instead of an evolution? Why? Just why? We really don't need two more boring pure psychic type Pokemon that aren't strong. They just take up deck slots for far better Pokemon. Number 19 is Clampearl, Huntail, and Gorbis. These are here strictly because having to do two different trade evolutions to get both using two different items is really annoying. Number 20 is Burmy, Wormadam, and Mothim. Wormadam is Pokemon 7's least favorite Pokemon, so uh, I'll be nice to him, we'll kick him out. Number 21 is Patchrat and Watchog. I hate Watchog. Its Super Fang, Hypnosis, and Confuse Ray combo is the bane of any Unova playthrough. I do not want to have to deal with that in any other game. Number 22 is the Monkeys. We all know that no one likes the Monkeys the group of Pokemon, not the band. I'm sure there's quite a few people who like the band. While the base forms are cute, the evolved forms are slightly varying, pretty ugly, just different colored monkeys. They are some of the most unpopular Pokemon in the entire game, and there's three of them. If these Pokemon were cut, it would get rid of six whole Pokemon species that I am very confident few would miss. Number 23 is Woobat and Swoobat. Again, this is a cave related thing. While I definitely don't want to keep seeing Zubats in caves anymore, I also don't want to see cheap discount Zubat either. Number 24 is Fungus and Amoongus. I just simply don't like Fungus and Amoongus very much. Fungus is kind of cute, but Amoongus is one ugly mushroom. Plus, if they're gonna do an overworld, think it's an item, but it's actually a Pokemon thing, they should just do Voltorb and Electrode. Those make a lot more sense than Fungus and Amoongus ever did. Number 25 is LGM and Behem. I just don't really care about these Pokemon. They're very forgettable, strange looking Pokemon. Plus they're just another pair of relatively dull pure psychic types like Spoink and Grumpig or Chingling and Chimeco. I'm much more likely to be interested in using a Pokemon if it's a dual type. So if you've got some forgettable single types, I'm more likely to not care about them. Number 26 is Binacle and Barbarical. They're ugly. They're just straight up 
ugly Pokemon, and also weird. Number 27 is Carbink. Why does Carbink exist? Seriously, what, what is the point of it? It is a non-evolving, bland Pokemon that I guess has some loose connection to Diancie, but that's it. It's got nothing else going for it, and since we know that Diancie isn't going to be in the Galar Pokedex since it's a freaking mythical Pokemon, then Carbink really has simply no point of being in the game. Number 28 is Crabrawler and Crabominable. Crabominable, as the name suggests, is an abomination. It is terribly ugly and just the worst Gen 7 Pokemon, and we really just don't ever need to see it again, ever. Please. Number 29 is Pukumuku. Pukumuku is in a similar situation to Carbink. It's very forgettable and doesn't have much use or purpose. It's just there and is another random pointless Pokemon to have to get for the decks. I don't really need to see it again. And number 30, what will probably be the most controversial entry on this list, most of the starter Pokemon. I say most of the starters because obviously we're gonna have the Galar starters and we're gonna have the Kanto starters too, cause Leon has a Charizard and there's no way they include Charizard and not the other two. As I said, this is probably my most controversial entry on this list because the starter Pokemon as a group are probably the most popular group of Pokemon of all of them. A massive amount of people's favorite Pokemon is a starter Pokemon. Myself included, Sceptile is my favorite Pokemon of all time. But I don't need to see them in Sword and Shield. Heck, I don't even think we needed to see the Kanto starters in Sword and Shield. The fact that Leon, the Galar region champion, seems to have a Charizard as his strongest best Pokemon is ridiculous. I hope it's a red herring and that his best Pokemon is actually a brand new Gen 8 Pokemon like it should be, but if not, that's still too much freaking Charizard attention. I like Charizard, but come on guys, this is too much. The reason I don't need to see all the other starter Pokemon in Sword and Shield is because obtaining them would be so annoying. Just think about it. If a Pokemon is in the Galar Pokedex, that means it has to be obtainable in Sword and Shield. Therefore, if other gen starter Pokemon are available, there's probably other instances of, hey, choose your starter Pokemon from this other region. You pick one, you don't get the other two, you gotta trade the other two from another game. That means that not only do I already have to worry about getting the other two Galar starters from other games and leveling them up to complete the Pokedex, that means I'd have to do that for several other generations. That is, unless they include some method like Island Scan, where they make it so all of the starters are available in the wild somehow, but I'm not gonna get my hopes up. Plus, in my eyes, if I wanna use a certain starter Pokemon on my team, I just play through a game where it is a starter Pokemon. If I wanna use a Sceptile, I play through a Hoenn game. That way I have it on my squad for the entire journey. I completely understand wanting a starter that you're sentimentally attached to to be in your sword and shield after you beat the league. However, since there's the qualifier of for a Pokemon to be in sword and shield, it has to be in the Galar Pokedex and therefore obtainable in sword and shield, I don't need the starters because I don't wanna deal with obtaining them. So that wraps up my list on Pokemon that I hope will not be in Pokemon Sword and Shield. If you don't hate me after this video, don't forget to leave a like on the video, and if you want to see some more of my Pokemon content, I recommend this video here. All right, that's all I have for now. So till next time, pick your hands. Gotta catch some more.